Welcome, friends, as we travel down that highway through Scripture on Route 66, the biblical Route 66, in our wonderful Day in the Lord broadcast. We're now driving into Book 3 of the Book of Psalms. Psalms is divided into three different books, five different books, I mean, and we're in Book 3. And in Book 3 is a section beginning with Chapter 73, going through 89. And here we find a section de developed mainly around the nation of Israel, uh, and how God is dealing with them. As a matter of fact, 73.1 says that very clearly when it says, Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. So we're dealing with the nation of Israel. Of course, this is, a, is applicable to all of our lives, uh, whatever uh, our nationality, whatever our age, whatever. Uh, this, these things uh, apply to our lives. But God, in this text, is dealing with, largely with the nation of Israel and trying to guide them into a, a life of godliness. As that takes place, we, we look at Psalm 73, one of the great Psalms in the, in the collection. And here we find that although God is good and, and God is good to Israel and God is good to those who are pure of heart, in verse two, we find that the psalmist himself is in trouble. He says, but as for me, my feet came close to stumbling, my steps had almost slipped he is he's about to fall. This man of God who's writing this great psalm is about to slip. He's about to stumble. Uh, why is he struggling so deeply at this point in his life? Well, verse 3 tells us, For I was envious of the arrogant, and I saw the prosperity of the wicked. As he looked around him, he saw that so many of the wicked that he at least considered wicked in the world around him lived charmed lives. Uh, they were actually, as he goes on later, uh, seemingly living better than him. Uh, their lives were full, their, their families were great, their wealth was there, and all these kinds of things, good health, and so forth. And, and as he looked at these people, he, he, he was wondering, what's the point of living for God? Uh, if you live for God and, and your life is not better off than those who don't live for God, then why live for God? And uh, that was the kind of thing he was struggling with. But that all changed uh, with him when he entered the presence of God. And we drop down to verse 17. Until I came into the sanctuary of God, and then I perceived their end. Surely you have set them in slippery places and cast them down to destruction. He says, when I, got the, when I came into the presence of God and I saw the life of the wicked through the eyes of God, I realized their lives were not as charmed as I thought they were. As a matter of fact, they were in slippery places. And ultimately, uh, their lives uh, will be such that they reap what they sow. And as he began to understand that, that changed his perspective. And so that later in the, in the book, chapter uh, 73, verse 25, he says, Whom have I in heaven but you? And beside you I desire nothing on earth. And my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever, verse 28. But as for me, the nearness of God is my good. And I have made the Lord God my refuge, and that I may tell of all your works. As the psalmist now has got his perspective on straight, he's looking properly at life, at himself, at God, and at others around him. He now realizes that his perspective was skewed and had led him in a wrong direction, almost to despair and stumbling. But now that he sees life through God's eyes, he now sees the wonder of God himself. And he wants to uh, live for him and love him and realize that God is his everything and his all. So this wonderful psalm opens up this book, this sub-book of psalms, and it gives us the perspective that will be found all the way through this little book. We'll pick up the next one, book four, tomorrow. You have a wonderful day in the Lord.